ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. The mayor of San Diego takes executive action as cities around the county work to ease the burden on restaurants facing new restrictions. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Mayor Kevin Faulkner's executive order today lets restaurants in the city expand their outdoor seating. No permit needed. Our ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala explains what's covered in the order and what the city still needs to do. And I hope that other Southern, Southern Californian cities do this. It's the new normal dining in private parking lots and on sidewalks. Effective immediately, San Diego restaurants can provide this type of outdoor dining with no permits required. That's after Mayor Kevin Faulkner signed an executive order Tuesday. It will allow restaurants to establish sidewalk cafes without a permit. And second, it will allow restaurants to use parking lots for outdoor dining. If you are going to do a sidewalk cafe, you are not exempt from the ADA uh, requirements in order to provide a four foot path of travel. The move comes as COVID-19 cases continue to rise. Many outbreaks have been linked back to restaurants, forcing the state and county leaders to prohibit indoor dining for at least three weeks. For the city to say, hey, we're out of the, the fee game and we're out of the enforcement game for now, um, it's really a lifesaver for these businesses. Benjamin Nichols is the executive director of the Hillcrest Business Association. He's been pushing for the city to also allow dining in parking lanes. Nichols says that could be an answer for restaurants that just don't have enough sidewalk or parking lot space to actually offer outdoor dining, like in Hillcrest and North Park. Putting it in the parking lane can really save these businesses. Mayor Faulkner says that idea is part of a bigger ordinance proposal that will be sent to the full city council for approval next week. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. We've reached out to other cities across the county to see if they have plans to expand outdoor dining. We heard back from El Cajon and Chula Vista. El Cajon created new guidelines in May allowing for outdoor dining. No permit is required if the city's outdoor seating standards are met. And in Chula Vista, city staff are also looking at closing some streets and using sidewalks for outdoor dining. And tonight, Poway City Council members unanimously approved a proposal by Mayor Steve Voss to purchase outdoor picnic tables. The tables will be used by restaurants in need to help with outdoor dining. Mayor Voss tells ABC 10 News they will likely be purchased with funding from the CARES Act. He also says no permits will be required to use the tables on the sidewalks or private parking lots. Yeah, I think this is kind of a no-brainer, win-win type situation. I would love to see more picnic tables in our parks eventually, and so that's a great thing. Um, and to, to do every little thing that we can to help our local businesses. Voss expects the tables to start being distributed this week. Once the restaurants no longer need them, they will be moved to local parks in Poway. President Donald Trump wants schools to reopen this fall despite coronavirus. As ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo shows us, local leaders also want to get back to school, but they say the federal government needs to do more to make that happen. San Diego Unified is set to start school at the end of August, but school board officials say to be able to do so safely for the entire year, they need more funding. We want to reopen the schools. Uh, everybody wants it. The moms want it. The dads want it. President Trump pushing for schools to reopen in the fall, despite the coronavirus pandemic. On a call with governors, the education secretary, Betsy DeVos, echoing that message. Ultimately, it's not a matter of if schools need to open, it's a matter of how. Locally, leaders say they too want schools open, but need funding and COVID-19 under control. If Donald Trump is serious about wanting to get kids back in school in the fall, which I think we all support, then maybe he ought to get serious about taking the issue of COVID serious. San Diego Unified is set to start school on August 31st, giving parents the option of in-person or online learning. But they only have enough funding for half of the school year. If not, they'll go all online for the second half. School Board Vice President Richard Barrera. 
but we need to see the federal government step up and prioritize schools and not just pay lip service to the idea of reopening. They actually need to fund the additional costs of reopening. The pressure to reopen schools comes on the same day that California joined a multi-state lawsuit against the Trump administration over funding for the CARES Act, accusing the Department of Education of trying to take funds from public schools and diverting it to private schools. It was not supposed to be an opportunity to make some political play to shift public taxpayer dollars to private schools. The president says attempts to keep schools closed is playing politics. I think it's going to be good for them politically so they keep the schools closed. No way. Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. Today, county leaders voted to spend $5 million it received from the CARES Act on testing, contact tracing, and treatment at local schools. More states are rolling back reopenings as the national death toll continues to rise. 131,000 people now. ABC's Romina Puga reports the U.S. military is now activating to help overwhelm Texas hospitals. In just the first week of July, the U.S. has had more than 300,000 new coronavirus cases. In Arizona, testing sites are packed and labs are backed up. Robert Rosetko got tested at an urgent care in Tucson after showing symptoms. He isolated himself from his family and waited 27 days to hear his negative result. That specimen was sitting in a lab in Phoenix, apparently for maybe, what, three weeks? So is the test result even valid? In Texas, the U.S. military is sending nurses and respiratory specialists to hotspot San Antonio. We are days away from overrunning our hospitals. In Florida, where cases are ballooning, the commissioner of education is ordering schools to open next month for at least five days a week. The president pushing for the same nationwide. We're very much going to put pressure on uh, governors and everybody else to open the schools. This as the World Health Organization acknowledged emerging evidence around airborne transmission of COVID-19, particularly in close settings with poor ventilation. 239 scientists from 32 countries put pressure on the organization to change its current guidance that viral particles are only in the air for minutes. These scientists now say they may stay in the air much longer and are as tiny as aerosolized particles. It's a problem in uh, indoor environments, so in buildings and rooms where the ventilation is poor and virus can build up, especially if there's lots of people in the room. New cases tied to restaurants and bars have pushed several cities and states to roll back openings of indoor businesses. And as President Trump promised, the U.S. will formally withdraw from the World Health Organization next July. Joe Biden then tweeted he will rejoin the organization on his first day as president if elected. In Colorado, Romina Puga, ABC News. And here are the latest numbers from the county. 578 new cases reported today. That brings our total to 17,500. 12 more people have died from COVID-19, bringing that total to just under 400. To our north, Ventura County is quickly running out of ICU beds and has activated an emergency surge plan. Hospitals in the area are now using emergency room space and in some cases reopening closed wings of hospitals to handle all the overload from COVID-19. Health officials say the reason for the surge is because of large gatherings. What we're concerned about is if we don't change those social habits and activities, we're gonna exceed our surge space. And even normal patients, our trauma patients, our patients who come in with non-COVID related illness are impacted. Ventura County reports that of 79 hospitalized coronavirus patients, 31 are in ICU. A local Starbucks barista who refused to serve a customer who was not wearing a mask required by the rules for Starbucks just received $100,000 in cash. Oh my God. <laughs> and now wow. right there is $100,000. Wow. We first told you about Lennon last month. His story went viral when the customer posted a picture of him on Facebook saying he wouldn't serve her. A week later, $100,000 was raised for him on GoFundMe with messages of support pouring in. He plans to use that money to pursue a degree in kinesiology, donate to charity, and follow his dream of dance. But first, run, don't walk to the nearest bank. <laughs> yeah. Get that in your account. 
And now to a developing story. Protests unfolding in Indiana after a black man claimed a group of white men attacked him and threatened to, quote, get a noose. The incident happened on the 4th of July, and video posted to social media shows the men shouting racial slurs as they pin Vox Booker against a tree. He says the group accused him of trespassing. One of the gentlemen uh, yells to his friend to get a noose. I thought these individuals were literally going to lynch me. Booker says when police arrived, they also treated him with disrespect. Protesters are now demanding the men face charges. The FBI has opened a hate crimes investigation. A man shot by Escondido police during a traffic stop last month is now facing several charges. Rosando Sandoval Quizada answered to a judge today. He's accused of getting out of his car and then charging at an officer with a crowbar. Police say less than 10 minutes before the stop, Gizada's ex-wife called 911 claiming that he was at her home, which was in violation of a restraining order. He pleaded not guilty to charges including assault with a deadly weapon. A huge geyser of water spewed into the air in PB this evening after a truck took out a fire hydrant. You can see the massive geyser raining down on firefighters as they work to turn off the water. This happened after a truck that was hauling three cars ran into the hydrant on Garnett Avenue. Eventually, a city worker was able to shut off the water. Some nearby businesses had to close because of damage. Mary Kay Latorno, the former middle school teacher who infamously married one of her students, has died. The Torno gained notoriety when it was revealed that she had been having a sexual relationship with her 12 year old student, Vili Fuilau. She got pregnant with two of his children before he was 15 and eventually served seven years in prison for child rape. They got married when she was released from prison and separated last year. The Torno had been battling cancer for months. She was 58 years old.